Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I want to talk about the three languages of the three principles. And if you're familiar with with my work and and with the the, the sort of field of the three principles, you know that they refer to the three underlying elements that make up our reality. What we, we often call divine mind or universal mind, which is the energy and intelligence behind all things. Divine consciousness or universal consciousness, which is that which allows us to experience life through the senses. It is that which is aware. It is the space within which our experience unfolds. And divine thought or universal thought, which is the creative force. It is the power that makes mountains out of molehills and can create heaven and hell in a single moment. And I love the depth with which you can explore those principles. In a way, they're so simple that you can explore them forever because they have so many implications and the interplay between them is is literally the building blocks of our moment-by-moment experience of of life, of being alive. And so I'm, I'm fascinated often talking to people who knew Sid Banks because Sid was the, 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 the enlightened Scottish welder who first sort of identified these principles. And, and, and it was just his way of talking about what he saw when he had his enlightenment experience, when he went beyond the human into whatever it is that we are beyond our shared humanity. And, and one of the conversations I've had in the last year that fascinated me was with my colleague Dick and Bettinger, and we'd been teaching a course together in London, and, and we were having dinner afterwards, and we got into a kind of a conversation about how people sort of try to find the right way to talk about these principles. And the right way for some people is the way Sid did it, or the right way is a particular in, a particular methodology, a particular uh, languaging of, of them. And how to my mind, I always was uncomfortable with that because I'm kind of aware that different people hear things differently. And so if you only have one way of talking about something, you're only going to be able to reach a very small part of the population. And Dickens said that Sid actually talked about how each of the principles, mind, consciousness, and thought, could only really be understood in its own language. And that the language that was best used to explain and understand the principle of thought is logic. And Sid talked about it as the logic of the psyche, psyche logical, that there's a logic to the principle of thought and action because it only works one way, from thought to feeling, thought to experience, inside, in other words, the formless not yet created, to outside, the form. And that's why we talk about it as living from the inside out. And when you're talking about the logic of the psyche, you can talk about it as a paradigm, right? It's a 100% reliable guide to life. And it's pretty much as close as we can get in words to the truth about how the mind works and how our moment-by-moment experience of life is being created. But the language that's, that's kind of best used, most suited to explain the principle of consciousness isn't logic. It's metaphor. Because consciousness is that which is aware. So it's very difficult to become aware of that which is aware in the same way as it's very difficult to see your own eyeball unless you're looking in a mirror. So to understand consciousness, imagine a a lake reflecting clouds and birds and sky. Now, the lake has no intention, right? It's not trying to reflect clouds and birds and sky. It's not trying to reflect some birds but not other birds, some clouds but not other clouds. It has no preference for what it reflects. Well, another metaphor for consciousness is the sky. Well, what's true about sky? Well, it's vast. It's unbounded. It's able to contain every airplane, bird, cloud that passes through it. It's home to the sun itself, the source of energy for all organic life. Well, if logic 
is the language of the principle of thought. If metaphor is the language of the principle of consciousness, then what, what's the language of mind? What language points to the invisible power at the heart of life itself? What language best describes the animating force? What language brings to life the divine spark that lights us on fire and allows us to burn brightly throughout our lives? And, and in Sid's words, the two words that Sid used to point to mind. The first was silence. And, and he, he often said, and I, 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 every time I hear him say this, I go, oh yeah, every human being is looking for a silent mind. And, and it's not silent like the opposite of noisy, because I think we get caught up in that when we try to meditate, and we try to shut up the voice in our head, and it becomes like this battle, and it becomes noisier as we go. But the kind of silence that every human being is looking for is the silence within which the noise of our thinking arises. It's, it's the nothing out of which everything comes. So silence in that sense, it's, it's not just available to us. It, it's fundamental to our nature. It is natural in us. It is innate. The second word Sid used to... to to describe the language of mind is love. And, 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 and I, I, you know, we use societally the word love as a verb, right? We talk about treating people with loving kindness, doing things with care. But, but in this case, love is a noun. It's, it's a way of describing that, that space within us from which kind and caring action naturally and spontaneously arises. And, and the experiential essence of what the three principles are pointing to so in, in talking about silence and love, what we're really talking about is a quiet mind and a beautiful feeling. And, and a quiet mind and a beautiful feeling are at the very heart of what the three principles are pointing to. We talk about them as our innate health. We talk about them as our deeper nature. We talk about them as our true identity. And, and for me, in that conversation, just so much made sense to me because I've always had a gift for logic and I've always had a gift for metaphor. And, and in my books, you know, people seem to like them because they're very logical and they like the metaphors. But as a teacher, letting love and silence speak through me, that feels a little bit more like a, a forgotten skill. That feels a little bit more like a, a lost art that I'm re-finding. And, and maybe, and I don't know if this is true, but maybe that's why for me and for a lot of teachers of the principles, when we speak about the nature of mind, we get a little stupid. <laughs> right? we, we suddenly are at a loss for words. But if we stick with it, wh whatever comes somehow is worth the wait. And even if nothing comes, the, the silence and the love in that space of waiting are, are always worth the wait. So if you're a student of the principles, and, and, and if you're listening to these podcasts, and particularly one called The Three Languages of the Three Principles, I'm going to assume that you are, I, I encourage you to learn all three languages and, and enjoy everything you learn in in. in First, maybe in whatever language you find it easiest to understand, if you're logical, look to the logic of thought. If you're, you're, you like metaphor, listen to the metaphor of consciousness. And if you're not understanding the principles and thinking they're really complicated or looking around and seeing, well, other people seem to get this and I don't, then, then let it be simple. Let it be about love. Let it be about silence. And if you want to share the principles, but you worry that you're not articulate enough to share metaphors, or you're not logical enough to talk about thought, then, then just give voice to the silence in you and, and take the time to let the love within you speak. Have fun, learn heaps, and I'll speak with you soon. 